You probably heard Python is an object-oriented programming language numerous times at this point. This means Python supports user-defined classes and objects. One thing that is particularly interesting about Python is that you can not only create custom objects, but every pre-existing thing available in Python is already an object, whether it's strings, numbers, functions, or even classes. In this video, we will learn to check the type of objects, find the attributes and methods, and have a solid understanding of Python objects, which will help you become a better Python programmer. So let's get started. As I've mentioned already, everything in Python is an object and we can check this using the type function. Let's try it out. I'll go to my code editor and I'll say numbers equals one comma four comma nine comma 16. And let me say print type numbers. Let me run this code. In the output we see class list. This means the numbers list is an object that is instantiated from the list class. Let's try a few more examples. So let me create a number. I'll say n1 equals 5 and let's print the type. I'll also try a few other data types. So I'll say flag equals true print type flag. Let me also try a function. So I'll say def my underscore function and I'll create an empty function. Now let me say print type my underscore function. Now when I press run, we can see that all these entities are instantiated from a class, which means they are all objects. We can list out all the attributes and methods of a given object by using the dir function. Let's try it out. Let me remove this code first and I'll say numbers underscore list equals one comma two. In the next line, I'll say print dir numbers underscore list. Now when I press run, this means that our list can access all these attributes and methods. Let's use the underscore underscore add underscore underscore method. That's the first element of this list. It is used to append all the items of another list to the end of the current list. So I can say, let me first comment this out. Then I'll say result equals numbers underscore list dot underscore underscore add underscore underscore and then let me add another list three comma four. Now let me print the result and see what we get. When I press run, then I get a list that has one and two and the elements of the other list appended at the end. By the way, we can also accomplish this task by using the plus operator like this. I'll first comment out this code and then I'll say result equals numbers underscore list plus three comma four. When I press run, then I get the same output as before. In fact, the plus operator internally calls this same underscore underscore add underscore underscore method when working with lists. That's why we can use the operator like this. As you can see, even though we are working with operators, we are actually using attributes and methods of the object internally. Let me uncomment this code and run it again. If you look at the attribute of lists, we can see append, clear, copy, count, and many other methods that we have been using from before. So if you're unsure about what attributes and methods an object can use, the dir method can be useful. And if you're finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be magnificent. The ID function. In Python, every object has an ID for identity. The ID of an object is always unique and constant for this object during its lifetime. We can check the ID of an object by using the ID function. Let's try it out. So in my code editor, I'll remove this old code. And I'll say number one equals five print ID of number one 
And let me create another number. So I'll say number two equals 10 print ID of number two. Now when I press run, then you can see two numbers 9784992 and 9785152 are printed. This is the ID of the number one object and this is the ID of the number two object. Let me modify this program and I'll assign number one to number two. So here I'll say number two equals number one and when I press run now, you can see that both of these IDs are the same. This is because we are working with the same object. Python does this for memory optimization. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programming team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit size lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description. How variables actually work. Suppose we have a code like this. In our previous videos, we have been saying that phi is stored in A, but this is technically wrong. Here, A is more like a name tag and it can refer to any value. Currently, it is referring to object phi. Now, if you create another variable B and assign A to it, then both A and B will refer to the same object. Let me give you another example of this. Suppose we have a list like this. So I'll say A equals 1, 2, 3. Let me assign this variable to another variable. So here I'll say B equals A. Now I'll modify A by adding one more element to it. So I'll say A dot append the element 4. Next, let me print the values of A and B. So here I'll say print A equals A and print B equals B. I'll run this code and you can see A and B both have the same value even though I've made no changes to B. This is because A and B are referring to the same object. As you can see, I've done B equals A. And if we check the ID of the variables A and B, they will be the same. That's why we use the list copy method to copy one list to another if we do not want this kind of behavior. So here I'll say A dot copy. And now when I press run, then you can see A and B don't have the same value because I have only modified A and B which was a copy of A is not modified at all. That's it for this video. You can find the source code of all these programs in our GitHub repository. The link will be in the description below. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.